Hello YouTube, this is Goddard Radio Moscow here again with another beer review for you today. Now for this one I'm going to go back and do an English beer for you. I've not done an English beer in quite a long time actually, but this is another one of the various London craft breweries that have been popping up over the last year or two. I've already done reviews from the London Fields Brewery with their Three Vice Monkeys beer, and I also did the Camden Town Brewery with their Camden Hells Lager, both of which were really nice, so I'm really looking forward to trying this one for you today. This is the Pressure Drop Brewery's Freiman's Dunkelweiss. This one's quite interesting as well for me because apparently it's a combination of the German Dunkel style and the German Hefeweizen style, two of my favourite beer styles in fact, so I'm really looking forward to trying this one for you. But anyways, as is usual with my beer reviews, I'll just take you through a little bit of a history of the brewery, but if you are simply just interested in the tasting of this beer, then feel free to fast forward towards the second half of the video and you will catch that, but the history of this one's very short, so hopefully you want to stay with me for that. But this is another one, as I mentioned, of the seemingly numerous microbreweries that have been opening up in London over the last little while. The Pressure Drop Brewery was apparently formed in 2012, with the first of their beers being sold to the public in early 2013. It's owned by three friends, Graham, Sam and Ben, and it operates out of a property under one of the railway arches in the Hackney area of London, very famous of course for being the birthplace of Iron Maiden. And this is quite a common thing actually in Scotland and the rest of the UK, is that a number of little businesses operate outside, operate out of these little railway arches. In Scotland you see it in Aberdeen, Edinburgh and Glasgow, it's quite a cool little premises that you get in these sort of places sees but the website say that they've been mainly brewing with a small pilot brewing set but in June they upgraded to a new 800 litre brewery and began brewing with it very quickly so this will be where this guy's comes from and apparently they've also had a collaboration with MasterChef winner Tim Anderson and he presented some of their beers at a special tasting night in Duke's Brewing Queue along with beers from the Beavertown Brewery. This is another interesting London craft brewery and I will be reviewing one of those very very soon for you. I've got one of those there to do the video for. But they've made some appearances at several different beer festivals throughout the UK. The most recent one was the independent Manchester Brewing Festival there and they, apparently their beers got very very good feedback there. But you're actually getting a lot of London craft beer throughout the UK now uh, because of odd bins the shop here this is where I got this beer of course in the Aberdeen store but you can get quite a few of these different uh, London craft beers there and they're actually very very good so worth checking out this particular sort of type of beer if you like but I really really like I really like the London craft beer that I've tried so far but anyway, the other beers from the uh, the Pressure Drop Brewing Company are in the regular range. The Stokey Brown, which is a brown ale. The Street Porter, which is a London Porter. Wu Gang Chops, the tree, which is a vice beer. Bosco, which is an IPA. And the Pale Fire, which is an IPA that they seem to have experimented with quite a little bit with different hop varieties and things like that. So really, really interesting. There's other beers as well are listed on the Rate Beer website. And I think these maybe have been brewed specially for restaurants or as collaborations or experimental ones in fact but this is one of the uh, this is one of the the current ranges and those five that I listed for you there are also in the current range as well yeah, I'll put the brewery website for you into the description of the video so check that out if you're interested and you will see them update this over the next little while they've got a news section there where you can keep up to date with the different uh, with the different goings on at the brewery if you like but let's have a little look at the bottle cap and the artwork on this one I'll just bring it up for you this is a 4.8 percent Dunkelweiss beer apparently but I'll just bring this up for you just now and you can have a little look at it it's got quite nice nice sort of modern artwork on it if you like, a nice kind of eye on it there and things like that. I'm not a great fan of uh, of art really but I really like the labels that some of the craft breweries are producing these days and it's, I think it's maybe a thing that stems from my love of metal. I do, act I do actually like good artwork but I'm not like an avid fan of art if you like but as you can see there on the front of their beers and this is common with all their beers actually is they have the sort of little uh, sort of profile there so you can see Fryman's Dunkelweiss dark smoky wheat beer 4.8% ABV it's just a plain black bottle cap that's on this one here for you but let's get this guy out and get on with the tasting of this one as I say it's a 4.7 is a 4.8% sorry Dunkelweiss beer and I looked up exactly what this style entailed and apparently they tend to have the same banana and clove notes as a uh, as vice beers do but they have a bit more of an earthy and roasty character to them so quite interested to see what this guy's like but let's get this guy open Nice bit of smoke coming off that one there. There was a lot of smoke actually coming out of there. But let's get this guy out and get on with the tasting. Expecting this to be a little bit darker, which it is turning out to be. So let's get this guy out. Nice bit of head on this one, as you would expect from a German style beer. But yeah, as you can see there, a really nice sort of 
dark chestnutty colour on this one. You can even smell it before you actually go in for the go in for a proper smell on this one if you like. It does have that Germany smell to it. Really, really nice smelling beer. But yeah, as you can see, if we take this up to the light, you can see it's a sort of hazy, very kind of dark chestnut colour. If I put my fingers over there, I can't see through that. Very hazy if you like. There's maybe about two fingers of head there, I would say. Just under two fingers, but it's gone down a bit since I've poured it. Nice foamy head, actually. I would describe it as maybe beige off-white. But yeah, really nice looking beer. It actually does look very, very German, I have to say, on this one. And that head's retaining quite well, which is what you expect from German beer as well. But really, really nice looking beer. Not sure if this, maybe dark chestnut mahogany colour is a bit more of a better description of this one. In terms of the aroma for this, it's an interesting one actually, as you would expect is it from the sort of combination of styles. There's a, bit of, there's a good bit of sort of caramel, toffee, nutty element in there from the malts, as you would expect. And a bit of smoke too, but you're getting that light banana in the background as well. And there's a bit of yeast in there too, I think. But yeah, a really, really nice beer, I have to say. A really, really nice smelling beer. Very complex with this one. If you try this, definitely take a, a while just to take in the aromas and try and get a hold of that. But really, really nice smell. And as I say, you're getting the sort of nice caramel malts in there with sort of a kind of nutty element to it and a bit of a bit of roasty character smokiness to it which you would expect from the sort of dunkel style of beers and you're getting the light banana and yeast as well as I say the combination of the styles but let's give this guy a taste and see how we get on very interesting actually quite a bit of carbonation when you take it in I have to say yeah the first thing that's coming with this one, you're getting a bit of roasted caramel malt up front, I would say, and there is the nutty flavour in there as well. Yeah, you're getting the wheat. The wheat is more coming out in the middle of this one, I would say. There's a bit of spice in that maybe as well. And there is a bit of banana, but the banana is quite su uh, suppressed. It's mainly sort of wheat and a bit of spice in there in the middle as well. And then the ban banana is just in the background, I would say. But this is an interesting taste in beer. On the finish, yeah, it's quite smoky as well. And there's just a little bit of sweetness to it as well. Smoke actually lingers quite a bit through this one. It's a really interesting style actually, there's maybe just a little bit of chocolate in there as well to be honest with you. Really interesting beer as I say, but you're getting a nice roasted caramel entry to it with a bit of nutty flavour coming in there. Then the wheat comes out in the middle with a bit of spice character to it and you're getting that sort of uh, banana that you would expect from the vice beer in the middle, but it's quite suppressed. And there is a sort of chocolatey element that I think comes out more on the end. You're getting a sort of sweet roasted end to this one, just a little bit of dry character in there as well. But yeah, this is a really nice one, I have to say. It's actually very, very light and very drinkable. But really good flavour, really interesting flavour, I have to say, which is what you would expect when you're sort of blending two styles, if you like, of the beer. But I would describe this one in terms of the mouth. I would say this is sort of light to mid-bodied. It is actually very, very light for a dark beer, which is quite interesting. The carbonation is quite active on this one. It comes in with quite a bit of an attack and it smooths out only slightly. It is active throughout the mouth of this beer. And the beer itself, it does have a bit of an oily mouthfeel to it. It's quite a nice wet thing. I do like that with beers for them just to have a little bit of an oily mouthfeel. But you do have a little bit of dry character as well in the flavour and it's it's a really, really nice combination. As I say, they've done really well with this beer, in my opinion. It's a very good combination of the two different styles, but it does have its own sort of unique element to it as well. I mean, I highly recommend that you take a look at this brewery and give them a try if you get the chance. This is a really, really nice beer, and based on this one, I'd really be interested to try their other stuff. As I say, hopefully this beer review has been informative for you and you've enjoyed it. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please consider it. Uh, as I say, I just like doing these out of, out of a love of beer, really. It's really interesting to try different beers from all over the place. But as is usual, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. I hope you've enjoyed this one and found it informative. But I'll be back with you for another beer review, I think, tomorrow. And I've got quite a few more London beers to do, actually, if you're interested in that sort of thing. But you've been watching Goddard Radio Moscow. Hope you've enjoyed this, and I'll catch you soon. Cheers.